To those of you who have some semblance of dignity, Roy Moore, you'll be happy, will not be going to the Senate because his opponent will be going instead, the Democrat. Now, he just barely lost by only about 9,000 votes out of the 1 million that was cast. Now, as you recall, this was taking place in Alabama. This was the the man running for office who uh, basically is a pedophile. And that's a, a big thing that came out and really hurt his thing and really hurt his candidacy. And it's probably what eventually caused him to lose because... A lot of people were saying that this is a great victory, that a Democrat has finally gotten into that office since the first time since the 1960s, uh, there or about that time. It has been dominated by Republicans. But think about what actually took place. It took a guy to be a pedophile to actually lose an election. That's what it took for Alabama to actually vote against this guy. And even then, by less than like 1%. You, they call this a great victory, but you try to see it in the context in which it exists. You know, this really is something that's disgusting. This guy shouldn't have gotten any votes whatsoever. The guy has said a lot of things, like, like claiming that America was good when there was slavery, and a bunch of things like that. One of the strange things, and one of the most scandalous things that he said was that anything past the Tenth Amendment of the United States uh, would be the, the kind of things that he would think about repealing. Now, think about that if, if a Democrat had said that, that they were going to repeal part of the Constitution without really giving any explanation whatsoever. But I, I, I really digress on that point. But it, it, it's really interesting. Now, here's some of the things that can be found after the Tenth Amendment. Abolishes slavery and involuntary servitude except for punishment as a crime. Defines citizenship, contains the Privileges or Immunities Clause, and the Due Process Clause, the Equal Protection Clause, and deals with post-Civil War issues. Prohibits the denial of the right to vote based on race, color, or previous condition of servitude. Prohibits the denial of the right to vote based on sex. Now, if these are some of the things that Roy Moore would like to get rid of, I think that kind of really speaks to what kind of person he really is. Uh, he is a totalitarian Christian fascist. I think that's definitely reflected in his very own words of wanting to get rid of some amendments after the 10th. Now, he didn't specifically mention which ones he wanted to get rid of, but I think we can probably guess on his Christian fundamentalist perceptions and mentality in general which ones he'd probably want to get rid of. Now, this is the same guy whose, whose spokesman said that there shouldn't be any Muslims in government because they have to swear on the Bible. Of course, swearing on the Bible is not a legal requirement, but you can actually choose to swear on any number of things if you would like to do so. Now, he did say this on national television on CNN where he was called out for it. Judge Moore has also said... Uh, that he doesn't think uh, a Muslim member of Congress should be allowed to be in Congress. Why? Uh, under what, but, under what provision of the Constitution? Because you have to swear on the Bible. You, when, you, you, when you are before, I had to do it. I'm an elected official, three terms. I had to swear on a Bible. You have to swear on a Bible to be an elected official in the, in the United States of America. He alleges that a Muslim cannot do that ethically, swearing on the Bible. You don't actually have to swear on a Christian Bible. You can swear on anything, really. I don't know if you knew that. You can swear on a Jewish Bible. Oh, no, you can swear I swore on, a, on the Bible. I've done it three times. I'm sure Jay. you have. I'm sure you've picked a Bible, but the law is not that you have to swear on a Christian Bible. That is not the law. You, you don't know that? All right, Ted Crockett. With I don't more. know. I, I know that uh, Donald Trump did it when he when we made him president. Because he's Christian and he picked it. That's what he wanted to. That's what he wanted to swear in on. Ted Crockett with the Moore campaign. Good luck tonight. Thank you so much for being here. Now, if that's not bad enough, there was a lot of talk, a discussion with the Republican Party about what it is that they would do if Roy Moore was actually elected. You know, a lot of people around the country who aren't terrible human beings would not want someone as skeezy as Roy Moore in office, and they talked about possibly getting rid of him. Well, the Republican Party said that if he wins, they're not going to try to remove him. They won't stand in the way of any investigation into his uh, anything he may or may not have done, but they won't ask him to step down, even though they were jumping all over Franken to step down, which he should have. Al Franken should have stepped down for the sexual misconduct he carried out, but this guy should just outright be in prison. 
of the crimes that he's committed, but they're not going to ask him to step down. Okay, more of that great, you know, conservative morality that we, we, we often hear about. Now, there's been some questions about the legitimacy of the election thus far. Roy Moore has refused to concede defeat, even though he lost, albeit by a very, very slim margin he did lose. Now, there is uh, an ongoing court battle right now whether or not uh, digital copies of paper ballots can be destroyed by the state. Now, this is something that is under investigation right now. There is, uh, on Monday, there was an Alabama Supreme Court which stayed the order stopping the state from doing so. So these records, at least for the meantime, still have to exist. Destroying any kind of voting records uh, sounds very Republican to me and is... Although the election is not valid to begin with because it's a bourgeois democracy where the bourgeoisie are the ones who get the real the real choice, at least you would want to give the false perception that it's a legitimate vote, like not getting rid of ballots or getting rid of records so that people could go back and check. I mean, you would think that if you were going to lie to people and make them think that they have a choice, then you would want to at least make it look like they did. So at least with this Senate election, those ballots will not be destroyed. Now, of course, before these results even came in, it was already being shot up by liberals and Democrats that Russia was involved in this election and uh, Russian propagandists. By that, they mean literally anyone who disagrees with them or anyone who, and this is by Twitter's own words, this is by those who have testified before the Senate on so-called Russian interference with the 2016 election, that already they're blaming Russia for this, because somebody was just Russian, or a Russian account, or there was a Russian phone number, or the person just happened to write in Cyrillic, already it's being claimed that just that is enough to show that Russia was interfering inside of the election which Roy Moore lost. You know how, like, it's really funny that even when they win, they're still claiming that Russia interfered. And this is now a, 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 a go-to staple for the United States, for particularly for liberals and Democrats, anytime that they don't win. Anytime they don't get what they want, they immediately run right to this Russian conspiracy thing. And frankly, it's pretty disgusting. It's like, they literally can't lose. No one could possibly disagree with them. It must be some kind of evil influence coming from outside the country. Nobody could possibly dare disagree with the great holier-than-now goddamn Democrats, even though they're big of uh, money, money-loving corporate whores as the rest of them, and country-bombing imperialist murderers just as much as, as the Republicans are. But... In the end, it is at least some good news that the massive pedophile did not be able to go into the Senate. Now, in the next coming weeks, maybe that might change. I assume by the fact that Roy Moore is refusing to concede defeat, even though that he's lost, he's going to demand a recount. Uh, there's probably going to be... Maybe there's going to be lawsuits about this, and it's something that could go on for weeks. I mean, who who really knows? But at least for the meantime, we can at least be happy that something good actually came out of Alabama. But let us not forget the fact that a pedophile almost won. That the, the population, the voting population of Alabama almost chose that over somebody who was a civil rights lawyer. And not that the Democratic Party would know what civil rights are, but it's, 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 it's still an important point that needs to be made. That someone of such a degenerate character as Roy Moore, could come that close to taking a spot in the Senate. Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.